I'm hoping this goes smooth, by the way, because last week I spilled a cup of water in its entirety on my laptop. Dude, what happened? I, I just, I knocked <laughs> it over. I panicked and my uh, wife's grandmother was here and like wanted to see the house for the first time. I haven't seen her in a while and it was pandemonium. I ran down the street to a little corner store. I bought 25 pounds of rice. <laughs> put put rice in a laundry basket because my buddy Kevin said, "Look at just like a phone in rice, you got to put the laptop in rice." That, I mean, that makes sense, right? It does. Yeah. It's just it's a, it's a lot more rice. To get it's, a laptop. it's like way way more rice than like, than for this guy. And my yeah. wife's like, "Why the heck did you put get twenty five pounds of rice?" Then the laptop goes in, and you're still not even close. But so if. I'm hoping everything goes smoothly with this podcast. This is the first podcast since Watergate of 2021. Unbelievable. So hoping <laughs> that goes smooth. Before we go too far into this podcast, guys, if you haven't followed the TAC yet, follow Attack. We've gotten some requests and the beta code should be coming soon for the app. Attack is a new training app for wrestlers and other high-level athletes that is launching soon on the App Store. It's an app and a game where you score points based on your workouts and compete on leaderboards to see who truly works the hardest. It's the newest product to the wrestling market built by wrestlers with tons of cool elements, including technique portals that will change the way technique is consumed. Follow them on social at attack.app. That's A-T-A-C dot A-P-P for more and be among the first to get access to the app. Your favorite wrestlers on the platform. You should be too. I don't want to say more than that. When the app launches, we're going to have a lot to say. But mm -hmm. I'm ex I'm just excited for it, really. Yeah, I'm excited and I'm grateful for them. Like they've been a part of this. I, mm -hmm. I've like on the marketing side been a little involved. Um, so I, I'm super like the marketing guy in me loves to see how a product infiltrates a market. Right. And I and I'm the kind of like since I started my company, I have everybody in their mother that calls me and says, I got an idea. I want to start this. Have and you I heard any good ones? I've heard some amazingly good ones and I've heard there some disasters. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Where it's like it's like 60 seconds in and I know it's a complete and utter waste of time to even finish the phone call, but right. you try to guide somebody in the right way. The best is when somebody says, "I got an idea for an app nobody's thought of." I'm like, "I doubt it, but try me." It. Yeah. <laughs> like like there's probably no way, but Apps are new and coming out, and I think like what the, what Attack is doing is they're changing. They're making something better. It's not just like, oh, we've got a new idea. We're gonna let you block blue light with your phone. Like they're wow. doing some. That would be amazing. If it was possible. That would be that'd be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Sunglass Chenzo, by the way, today mm -hmm. makes reminds me that I need to go buy my glasses because my eyes are shot. I um I could use a new pair too. You know, it's been. It's been a bit since I've uh, indulged in some sunglasses, but I'm a big sunglasses guy. Who so. just bought some? Mark Hall. I just saw he was posting not too long ago. New Ray-Ban yes. vibes. Wow. That's what I'm wearing right now. But <clears throat> yeah. How was your um, weekend? You know, I uh, I can't complain too much. Um, good little uh, weekend at the Olympic Doles. Uh, M2 Magicians take home the team title. Uh, we did pretty and good. And they won by a large margin too, correct? Um, It wasn't... Did I you see know, 42 10 somewhere? I don't think that was the final. Um, Maybe that was like a first round. Yeah. Or something. The, the semifinal was 51 to 50, I want to say. Dang. With an Iowa team. Yeah, it was super close. Those guys came to scrap, but uh, M2 Magicians, champs at the Olympic Doles. There's so much. Bad. There's so much interesting storylines on youth and high school wrestling. I yeah. just don't know where to start to like start following it. Like, I get yeah. that you're coaching. So you have the connection that's so much easier like right and i didn't know anything about high school wrestling since i was in high school until this yeah. year so you kind of have a favorite at m2 do i have a favorite yeah oh i i can't pick favorites so so you have one and don't want to say it or you truly don't have one i have multiple favorites i don't have like okay a, that's fair a favorite i have multiple that's that fair do they know they probably have a good idea. <laughs> I mean, like, so, so here's the here's the context for why I even thought that you and Willie did like an eight minute interview, which was hilarious. It was great. Mm -hmm. And you got super excited. I believe it was over Jude Swisher. Yeah, that's that's one of my boys. <laughs> so I'm like, OK, I can tell the a couple favorites. Like you just naturally you connect with some people more, whether you like them or not more. You connect with people more. Well, and it's like, you know, he's he's got a ton better 
that's just, you know, we've had a lot of guys that have gotten a ton better over the past, you know, even year. And he's just one yep. of them. So it's just, it's exciting to watch, you know, those guys, you know, and even we have some girls too. It's exciting to watch them grow as wrestlers. Is it contagious to coach? Like, does it make you want to coach more and more? Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I do like it. I just, uh, actually just came from a private lesson with some kids. Um, so doing more stuff like that, it's, you know, it, like I said, like just watching them progress and everything like that's pretty fulfilling and it helps me with my wrestling also. Speaking of privates, if somebody wants a camp clinic, private lesson, what can they do? Cause it they is can, camp season. They can go to the website. Want to tell them about the website? Chenzo Joseph.com. We got, we got to put a link tree in your bio, by the way. Yeah, we do. I don't have we any need of those. To, I don't way, know how to do any of that stuff. No, that's yeah. I got to do it. Just like you're I'm on like, Facebook now. I think you just hit a hundred, hundred new followers. Did I really? Yeah. Go, and there's no me. content yet. We got to connect your Facebook so that when you post on Instagram, it automatically goes there. Yeah. I'm like technologically challenged. Yeah. Almost. I'm like an old person when it comes to that yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'm a like, wrestling skill challenged. So <laughs> I get it. I like, I'll go to grab my phone out of my pocket and my flashlight will be on like all okay. the time. That That's common though. That Like you can be a pro. You okay. can be like an absolute pro and your flashlight goes off. As long as it's right, not That makes somewhere, you feel better. I feel like a grandpa or something. As long as it's somewhere where it's not awkward. Like that's the worst. Like, your waiter comes all the theater shining in their face. <laughs> like, yeah, like, hey, what's up, man? <laughs> right. But either way, that's and and we we run a company that specializes in helping people doing it. So it's not just you. It's all right, well, that, everybody that makes needs that help. makes me feel way better. Carter, what's up, dude? Good boys. I love that color t shirt. Yeah, it looks good. I man. love it. Where'd you get that? I think a hot pink. I got it at like it was Forever Twenty One back home. Oh. It was like all the ladies like it too, so I gotta be fresh. There you go. <laughs> My sister-in-law just made me a sweatshirt that color that says Lake Becky, which is the name of the pond that I gave to the pond. And <laughs> I'm I'm obsessed with the sweatshirt. But actually, my wife's just walking by wearing it. Um, but oh, so I, you got to rock it next time. I, I will. It was actually so every time before we record, I have out somewhere what I'm going to wear. Today was the RBY National Championship shirt. But... But then I end up sitting on calls and work stuff, and now I'm just like I'm wearing the content, 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 content. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. No. I'm re I'm repping my gang here, my M2 guys. So hey, that's, that's just uh, that's what I was on today. I'm so gonna, wait, but I want so Carter real quick because normally we talk about some topics, then bring on our guests. We wanted you to talk about the topics with us, but I've kind of got a beef with Roman now because he sent me his national championship shirt. Did he not help you design a Carter national championship shirt? No, I don't have wow. One. I gotta get on that. Wow. We need to get a national championship shirt for Carter. What are we doing? That's right. Fresh yeah. national champ, baby. That's right. Love it. So let's start here. Ben Askren and Jake Paul this weekend. I'm like, so Chenzo, we talked about it back in December. We said, we did. We said, this is a, <laughs> this is a great payday opportunity for Ben props for taking it. I don't understand why Jake is doing it. Like, but I, I'm, I, I understand why he did it. I'm starting to think Jake is just like a marketing genius. I think like, he is. They sold yeah, a million and be. a half of these, a million and a half. I think he's a pretty good fighter too. I mean, boxer. We won't say fighter. I think he's a good boxer. Um, but yeah, he's. I mean, clearly he's a marketing whiz. You know, he's been crushing it for years, and he's just getting bigger and bigger now. Yeah, he's fighting. He's fighting big names that like aren't very good. You know what I mean? So that's pretty. Yeah. I I saw I saw a tweet and it was like it was like um, Jake Paul like after boxing for three years and beating three people that aren't boxers and it was like MJ like with the, the trophy, trophy. Like, yeah like crying I was like it's like damn that's funny but yeah he's um he is beating guys that are not boxers but like you know he looks half decent at least he uh, looks I, it but like if Car if Carter you giving him the one two or what bro yeah I would I would definitely sleep him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I love all the MMA fighters that are coming out now, and they're like, "Dude, step into the cage. I will kill you. I will expose you. I will like just <laughs> annihilate you. I will kill you." But like Jake's playing into being that villain. Like 
Ben retired twice, had hip surgery, trained in an aspect of combat sports he's never trained for. And like you just said, Jake is acting like he just beat Muhammad Ali. <laughs> like I he's mean, falling to his knees crying after. I mean, if you've never, you know, experienced a victory in sports before, like it's pretty cool. So like even <laughs> like even like those like, you know, I haven't experienced I'll say, that many. <laughs> I'll I'll like <laughs> You know, that's that's a victory for him in a, in a way. I mean, maybe it's not the greatest victory of all time, but it, a win's a win, and you know, kind of get your blood going a little bit. But blood do, you, in, do you think that for him? I don't think he thinks like he wins, and then he's like, "I'm the greatest boxer in the world. I just beat Ben Askren." I think he thinks like, "I just sold a million and a half fights and had a great payday. I'm a winner." Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what. what I, I do. You know what I mean? Like, why yeah. not? I mean, he's making mad money off of it. Yeah, I mean, but if it's just pure emotion, like directly after the fight, that's from the fight. But if it's afterwards and he's gloating and celebrating, probably from fans probably from the bread. I have no idea. Well, what's that? I said, how many fans were there? I don't think many. There was like no fans allowed, but probably. like Jake and Ben both had like an entourage of people yeah. that they let in. That's a different level of like of excitement when there's like a crowd. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. oh yeah you. we yeah. talked about that on the podcast this year. We, yeah. yeah yeah bro if you if you would have won that title this year with a full crowd it would have been even more electric than it already was yeah a lot more a lot well, more electric no i listen i was still pretty pumped up i mean anytime one of my guys gets it done crowd or no crowd oh uh, yeah it's the it's, same i'm not gonna lie like it was, mm-hmm. i was hyped Yeah, that's a, that's a win that no matter what, that's like a goal you have forever. I don't think that matters whether it's fans or not. I think it can only amplify your emotion. Yeah. Like, I don't think it can take away emotion, but I definitely think when you add the aspect of fans, like for me, that's one of my favorite aspects to going to NCAAs is the fans. Like hearing people cheer when somebody shouldn't win or like there's a team race and you know colin moore gets upset and everybody's going nuts like bo beating miles like you know those moments are still exciting with no fans but yeah. with fans i mean it how loud do you want it Chenzo, for your first one i don't i don't remember a lot dude um it was it was <laughs> <laughs> it was banging in there pretty good yeah but um yeah i was just after my first one, I was just pure adrenaline. I don't really remember a ton, to be honest. Yeah. I was pretty amped up. Um, but this ain't about me. So let's oh, go this- back. I want to go back to the very beginning of your season this year. First match against Indiana. So your first, you know, college match, you come out, you get thrown, you start chipping away. Well, you know, I've never experienced anything like that, especially in my first college match or anything. <laughs> so yeah. can you just talk about that a little bit? Um. When I first got thrown, I was just like, damn, like, that was quick. You know what I mean? I was like, like we're here. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to college. <laughs> like, it's time to wake up. And then, like, um, I started chipping away. And then, like, I wasn't real nervous, like, after it first happened. But, like, I'm like, damn, like, I'm in a hole now. You know what I mean? So, I'm like, I don't want to lose. So, like, I was kind of doing some with some drunk moves because I was trying to come back real quick. But then once I lost, I was just like, I just sat down. And I was like, yo, like. Coach Kill really went undefeated. You know what I mean? Like first match, like that's yeah. not happening anymore. So, like, <laughs> I mean, I didn't take it. Like, I mean, I knew I knew that kid wasn't very good at all. You know what I mean? Like, the next time he wrestled, like he's gonna get destroyed. So I mean, it's all good. But then, I mean, it was good though. You know what I mean? Like, I got better. I learned. So was, yeah, you did, and you could tell that you know just throughout the year too. You just kept getting better and better. Yeah. And um, you know, just a lot of matches you won, just straight grit. I mean, yeah. there was a lot of things going on behind the scenes, especially with you that um, nothing, you know, bad, but just, you know, making it a little tough on you. Yeah. And we knew that. And, you know, a lot of, you know, admiration, and respect from us for that, too. It was just cool to watch you throughout the year. Yeah, yeah. it was it was definitely a roller coaster of a year. Like I never experienced like anything like that. You know what I mean? Like we're like it's up and then like it's like right here and then it's down and it's up. It was like it was real weird because like I want to crush everyone and then like. I was winning some close matches and I wasn't very happy. So it was like, it was kind of weird, but it's all good though. And you, you had similar in high school where you lost in the finals your sophomore year. Then you went on a bender 
go undefeated two years with two state championships. How do you balance those highs and lows and use those lows? Like we talk about on this podcast all the time. Like so, so many people, they get really distracted by defeat. And so much of wrestling is health and timing. And you kind of honed in on what went wrong. Didn't make it too emotional. Like after you lose in the state finals, undefeated two state championships, you lose your college debut and then you go on a tear and avenge a loss against Kemmer. Like how are you balancing those highs and lows? Yeah. Well, so like it's for me. So when I played football, when I was a kid, I was coaching my dad. And he always said, each day you have a decision and that's to get better or get worse. You know what I mean? So then I always thought about it. So I'm like, it's real easy when everything's going good. It's to stay on course. You know what I mean? When, when you're winning, everything's going good in life. But when things go bad, I feel like that's what separates. It's like, it's the best from the, like, it's the other pack. So then like when anytime, like in life, when it can be in sports or like not in sports, like, I'll really say to myself, like, let's see who I really am, right? Like, in this moment right here, you know what I mean? So, like, I'll just, I kind of like um, it's those tough moments because that's when I thrive. And do you, do you think that's kind of like a base from where you got your work ethic from? If if you guys listening don't know, Carter is probably one of the, if not the hardest working athlete I've ever seen. Cal said so. that in a podcast that now is no longer on the internet. Cal came on this podcast just before the first NLWC event on Rockfin. And I said, who are you most excited for? I know you're a coach. You're excited for all of your athletes. But like, who are you most excited for? And he didn't really hesitate. And he said you. And ever since then, I'm like, wait, did he say Carter? Or did he say you? No, he said <laughs> Carter Storaki. All right, all right. By the way, is it Storaki or is it Italian like Storaci? Because I've heard both. Storaci. It's like C-A. <laughs> <laughs> okay not I'll barachi it. either it's not yeah. not barachi not sriracha either <laughs> no not sriracha sriracha gotcha so that work ethic, but, yeah where man. did it come from i think it's just like i was just born with it you know what i mean because like when i was born like anything i do like i want to win you know what i mean like it can be video games it can be anything so like like in my mind Everything that I can control, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna do it like max, like maxed out, you know what I mean? So then, like, I'm working on finding a balance with all that stuff too, you know what I mean? But I don't know. I mean, I enjoy winning and I enjoy working out and I enjoy all that stuff. So, quick, quick story, quick story. I'm gonna cut you off. Quick story. Carter's, Carter's a junior in high school. He's up working out at Penn State. He's wrestling with me. Okay. And he's going hard. You know, we're, He's getting after it, going, you know, balls to the wall, as, you know, some high school kids do with college kids. Usually they all start that way. And then, you know, five, 10 minutes in, it's like, boom, like heads down, they're done. He comes at me the entire time. At the end, towards the end of practice, actually gets in on my legs. I have real heavy hips. As a high school junior, lifts me up in the air, takes me down. I go to I go to Kale after practice. I was like, yo, we need this guy. I was like, I was like, I was like, you just see what he's doing? Like, we need this boy. Yeah. yeah. I remember that practice too. That was that was fun. Mm-hmm. I was I was dead afterwards. I'm not gonna lie. I was, I was Those pretty, are the yeah. best. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And like that's like, you know, I have similar stories too with me being recruited wrestling different places. Like I was wrestling yeah. Zane and, and he was just working me but you know i'm i'm dead tired but i'm like going crazy trying to yeah. beat this guy because i hate it um. i've got two different things to go off of that one is you said you're <laughs> uber competitive so last week on here i was saying that potentially my patriotism got the best of me when i told chimizo stop training here if you don't like america and we started talking about pettiness and how far it can get us i'm curious in your competitiveness, what's the dumbest thing you've ever been competitive in winning? Um, I'd probably say it was FIFA. Um, I was playing my brother in high school, and I was talking crap like like <laughs> for a long time. You know what I mean? And like he's playing on and off, and then like he's running his mouth too, and I'm losing. Like, and it's at halftime. I'm I'm down two one, and then he starts tripping my ear, and like I like freak out, and then I end up losing the game. And then, long story short, it was me and him, me and him and I'm getting into a fist fight with it. And it was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, who who won um, the fist fight? 
I did. I did. <laughs> So he Easy. won the battle, you won the war. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I recall a FIFA game between me and you at one point. You told me you never lost in FIFA. Yeah. I mean, so, I'm not going to count that loss. I mean, that, that, was, that was bogus. You lost, you lost <laughs> to me in FIFA also. I did. I did. So mm-hmm. the other area I wanted to go off of that was I heard the interview you gave after you win NCAAs this year, and Gary Abbott asked you about who you train with and who helps grow you. And I'm expecting like, I would have thought you were going to say Casey or Bo for whatever reason, those were two that I was just thinking. And you say Thomas Gilman, which I love. Like Thomas Gilman is just like, I become more of a fan of him every day. And the more NLWC and Penn state guys that train around him and women, because I think Helen just said something too. They're like, it, it's impossible not to be a Thomas Gilman fan when you're around him. Speak to your relationship with Gilman and what it's been like having him in the room. Yeah. So, like, I've always liked watching Gilman wrestle, like, when I was in high school, because, like, he was mean and tough. And I always liked that. And then I remember one practice, it was over the summer. I'm out of shape a little bit. Like, I had a little break. So, it was, it was during one of the breaks when those coaches were showing moves, and I was laying down. And he walks over to me and he kicks me. He's like, yo, get up. And then in my head, I'm like, all right, dude, like, you didn't just kick me. You know what I mean? So, like, I'm thinking how to play this. Like, I'm thinking how to play this. Like, do I freak out? Or is like, because, like, that's something I probably would do, too. You know what I mean? So I'm like, all right, like, he has some balls. You know what I mean? So then I didn't get up because, like, that kind of irritated me a little bit. And then, like, five minutes later, like, he comes back and kicks me in the heart. He was like, get the F up. And I'm like, dude, like, <laughs> this little dude, like, you know what I mean? Like, he's about it. So I'm like, all right, like, I respect him. You know what I mean? And then, um, so I knew he was hard-nosed. And then he's just always trying to help us out. You know what I mean? Like, he's he's always calling me over, hey, like, you should try this. And then, like, I'll give him up. Like, it's my advice, too. And then he's just super real and upfront. You know what I mean? Like, he'll tell you how it is and what you got to do. And, like, I really respect that a lot. Yeah, and I can just talk to that too, man. He's he's an awesome dude, and he um he pushes everyone around him. Yeah, and you know he put he doesn't just want himself to be the best; he wants everyone around him to be the best, also. And it's it's pretty cool to watch. And I I have I have a few funny stories, but uh, I'll I'll go into one real quick. Just please do. I was uh <laughs> we were getting our weight down for one of the Rockfin matches. Okay, we're like down the wrestling room. I might have told this before. But, I don't uh, think I've heard this one. The only one I've heard was, I think, when you didn't make weight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the only uh, Gilman story I've heard about you. So <laughs> I'm down the wrestling room, and you guys are wrestling on the TVs, right? Like, because we have TVs yeah. up. I'm, I'm just getting out of the sauna. I'm sitting on the mat with, like, my plastics on. And um, two of, of the guys on the team are down there wrestling a match, like, in their singlets because they didn't get a match for this for whatever reason. And I'm sitting there, and I'm timing them with the stopwatch. And then Gilman comes over and they're, they're 25 pounders. So this is, it's Gilman's domain, right? He comes <laughs> over and he goes, how much time is left? Or like, what period is it? I was like, there's like 10 seconds left of the match. And so that he's like, all right, match ends. I go, all right, time. And then Gilman goes, overtime, back on the line. <laughs> like grabs the stopwatch <laughs> from me and just gets on the mat and starts reffing. It makes him do like three overtimes. And then it has him do conditioning afterwards. I was like, what is it? What a crazy guy. But yeah. I absolutely love it. Like, I, I love Gilman. He's nuts. Yeah, I mean, he's – but that's like – that's what you want, right? That's what you want your no, older guys do, and you want them pushing the younger guys for sure, especially, you know, they're younger college guys. Like, that's what you want out of your club, guys. No doubt. Yeah, sure. And the loyalty he has, like, I remember as soon as he came – to the NWC, he came in the podcast and he said, like, I had talked, like, okay, so you went to Iowa, you were a Hawkeye, now you're a Nittany Lion. And he's like, look at, I'm grateful for my time there, but I'm a Nittany Lion. I'm in the trenches with these guys. This is who I want to win with. This is who I'm training with. And you can see it because there's a lot of camaraderie in general in Penn State. But like when Gilman won the trials, I don't think there's a single guy that's not like Thomas freaking Gilman. Like, let's go. He like, came out of nowhere. <laughs> Dude, did you hear that question? Yeah. Mm-hmm. My, so my fear in life when I do like interviews and stuff is to like ask a stupid question like that. I don't know. Like, you do you feel like you came out of nowhere? That was just that was bizarre. 
Yeah, that was bizarre. So Carter, another thing about you that I'm personally like, I really admire is your faith. You come out and you don't just, there's a lot of people that I think speaking about God is sometimes intimidating for some, some just get shy, but you come out and there's little things you say that you can tell there's, there's a sincere truth to like, I think it was after your big 10 match, somebody was interviewing you and you said like, you know, I, I can't really go see my family because of COVID. So I'm going to stay home, spend some time praying. Like you mentioned prayer, you mentioned things of talking to God, you mentioned um, seeking God first. Like how much has your faith played a role in your career and your success so far? Yeah, it plays everything, honestly. You know what I mean? Cause like I put God first and everything I do, whether it's like, it's his interview. Cause like, I mean, if it wasn't for God, I mean, like, I will not have my family, like, or myself, or, like, even this world, you know what I mean? So when I put God first, like, his power is infinite. So when I look at things, like, that means I can do everything as well. Because, like, then I have no limit on me either, you know what I mean? And he just, and when I pray to God and I talk to God, I mean, it goes both ways, you know what I mean? Because, like, um, it's a good relationship. And, like, I just go to him, like, in good times and in bad times and just like on my free time. And it just brings me at peace with like everything I like, you know what I mean? Everyone has problems that they go through with its family or, or whatever it is, you know what I mean? And when I put God first, like I'm just at peace with everything. Has that evolved more recently or has that been like that for a while? It's always been like that. I was always high on my faith, you know what I mean? And then I've been taking it like it's more seriously. I go to Bible study and like all that stuff. So, um, it's, I've always been high in my faith. I think it's super cool, especially like when you see Chenzo and I have talked before about, I'm always kind of surprised when wrestlers at different schools are buddies. Cause we so often just look at the competitiveness of this school yeah. versus this school. But then like you see David Carr and Aaron Brooks doing a Bible study and it unites like two schools, like Penn state and Iowa state aren't exactly really rivals right now. But you still, it's cool to see that yeah. fellowship and it's cool to see that that bond between it and that it's at the it's at the forefront. I think there's, you know, like I said, it can be intimidating, I know, for some people. And it doesn't seem like you're trying to come out and make room for it in yeah. an interview. Like, it's and, literally the first thing after you're... Yeah, um, because, like, I feel like um, it's just so important because you have to give God all the glory. You know what I mean? Because he's the one making everything happen. And two, you know, without God and his love, how can you, like, it's reach your full capacity as a human being? You know what I mean? When, like, yep. you have to in your heart or if you're holding grudges, you know what I mean? And if you're if you're doing bad things, I feel like that's going to, like, it's you versus you in life. And if you don't put God first and you don't cherish his love and you hold it in your heart and then you act upon it as well, then I don't. I don't, I mean, I think it'd be very difficult to reach your full potential as a human being in all aspects. It's interesting. I like that. When you have a year like this, where, you know, I want to talk to you about the camera loss and then beating him. And I want Chenzo to kind of, I want to talk about that also because Chenzo's really good at provoking the Jordan Oliver episode was just phenomenal. And that was all Chenzo provoking those questions. That was, that was J.O. just talking <laughs> Talking yeah, but stuff, man. But you knew what but, questions yeah. to ask him to get him going. All right, so with that being said, no, hold on, hold on, one more thing. What? Hold on. So now that you've had all this success, is that helping you kind of stay? Like, as soon as you and people are like, he can be a five-time NCAA champ. He can be this. He can be that. Like, there's a lot of pressure to be better every single time. Next time, like more. Okay, I won this. I have to go in this. Does that kind of keep you, I don't want to say humble because you seem humble, but, but having that proper perspective of knowing God, you know, that something very low can happen the next day or very high. And we kind of maintain and don't get too high or low. Does that help you once you have this amount of success? Um, I don't believe in pressure. You know what I mean? I feel like, I feel like pressure is something that, you put on yourself, you know what I mean? Cause like, I don't care what anyone thinks, you know what I mean? Like if it's the fans or like, you know what I mean? I'm not there versus me. I'm, I'm doing my thing. So like, whether it's a, a win, lose or draw, like I'm not there representing myself and 
and my team, my coaches, and my family and God. You know what I mean? So there's no pressure. I mean, I know all my capabilities. I'm going to get better every single second. You know what I mean? Like, so, yeah, I mean, I don't have pressure. I'm, I'm going to go out there next year. I'm, I'm going to do my thing, and then it's the same thing as every day. Yeah, man, and, and you could tell that. I mean, I could tell that from your wrestling, too, just from how you compete and just how from how you wrestle in the room and everything like that. Yeah, and like – I think we create a good environment for that too. No, 100%. Yeah. Cause like, I feel like our environment too, like at Penn state, it's just like, it's kind of hard not to like, not to be your best version. You know what I mean? Like you have to almost try like not to be like good. <laughs> and like, like, I mean, like also some of the other guys, younger guys in your class, you know, they did, it seemed like they did feel some pressure just because, you know, the rest yeah. of Penn state, um, but you seem to do a good job to, pr- to kind of separate that. Like, you know, I'm me, but I wrestle for Penn state, Yeah. but I still, I'm, I'm going to be me. I feel like that too is just, I feel like that's a mindset and like a belief factor. You know what I mean? Cause like I'll hear guys talk, you know what I mean? Like it's more in the season. Like, yeah, like I'm going to all American. And I'm like, what? You know what I mean? Like that doesn't make sense to me. Like you're already, you're already putting yourself, it's lower than other people. You know what I mean? Like that doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I don't care if it's freaking the incredible Hulk, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> incredible get, match you know, that would be. You know hey, what I mean? Like you do you think you do you think you could beat the Hulk? Yeah, one hundred percent. I think you could 100%. too, man. I think you could too. 100%. All right. So after Big Tens, after your finals match, what you know, what were your initial thoughts after that? I was like, dang, I lost again. Uh, like, that was my first thought, but then I was just like, I was just um, I was talking to God, and I was like, yo, I mean, like. All right, like I don't like losing, you know what I mean? Like I want to calm down, you know what I mean? So I was I was praying a little bit, but then I knew I was a better wrestler, you know what I mean, the whole time. I made a lot of mistakes in that match, a lot of technical mistakes. So when I watched the match, I was like, all right, like I can fix that, I can fix that, I can fix that. You know what I mean? And then also like me too, like there was never never a second where I thought that that kid was better than me for like, for like at any point, you know what I mean? So I just made all the adjustments that, that I had to make. And taking that into you, you know, with NCAs, was that, was that your main focus or just like, you know, kind of, you seemed like you were real calm, you know, when you were going out there yeah. and you just kind of had, like, I could tell that you were going to do very well just from, you know, how your, your presence was really just like, yeah. your, like leading up to that so did you approach ncaa's really differently than you did even big tens and earlier in the season with your matches no i mean it was the same approach that that like it, it's the same approach that's why i practice the way i do and that's why i train the way i do because not ready- not wrestling approach mental approach mental approach it, it, it's the same thing like i practice like i'm ready to go you know what i mean like it's the same it's the same mental approach as i do like in all my matches, you know what I mean? So like, that's just building reps in my mind. You know what I mean? Like you go to the gym and you work out, you get stronger. So like I build my mind like on an everyday basis, you know what I mean? So yeah, like yeah. I didn't approach it any different. That's good. Do you think that for you, you know, if you don't have pressure, what's your expectation for yourself? If you lose a match, and you're the better wrestler is the expectation that I have to win the next one. Cause if you think you're the better wrestler and you know, you're the better wrestler and you lose, is it strictly you versus you? Or is it like, okay, he he's done this. I now have to do this. Cause I heard you say that like you make adjustments pretty quick, which obviously yeah. happened. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, it's me versus me. So like, say if I'm wrestling, it's Chenzo, you know what I mean? Like he has heavy hips. So like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna rush with him like, oh I have Chenzo, he has heavy hips. Like I talk to myself, all right, when I get to his hips, it's like, all right, can you finish this? You know what I mean? And then if I wrestle it's whoever, it's just like they have certain skill sets that like I have to get through. You know what I mean? So like it is me versus me and like it's everyone versus themselves. So you really think of it as yourself kind of just like adapting through scenarios, not really. De- it depends. Yeah. It depends on the person, but it's more so the scenario that you're in. Than, yeah. Than yeah. That makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, cause like you can win every position, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like just win every position. That's the way I look yeah. at it. I like that too. Yeah. 
If I asked you your favorite match, I know I've asked like I've asked some people what their favorite match was, and I'm always anticipating like either, maybe the biggest result, like okay, winning NCAA's, and I forgot what match Chenzo said. But it was like a, I wouldn't say it was a quarters match. Like it wasn't the match I would have said okay, beating Imar. Do you have a favorite match so far? That's a good question. Um, I'll, I'll probably say the NCAA title. Yeah. I felt yeah. like the NCAA it makes title. sense. It's a it good does. answer. It does. It does. I mean, that'll yeah. be most people. Most people that you know get that level of success would yeah. say that. I'm sure. It was. I mean, it was my favorite match for my emotions, but like. Not with my wrestling. Mm-hmm. What yeah, was your favorite I, match with your wrestling? Um, probably the one where I got to pin at Big Tens. It was just like it was Maryland, I think it was. So I like pinning guys, and like I didn't get many pins this year. So uh, pinning people is um, always very fun. Yeah, that's, that's always a good feeling. So, so I, I previously <laughs> said that probably my favorite match throughout my college career um, was my quarterfinal match my freshman year because. I got taken down in the beginning, ridden the whole first period, and I had to get like a few takedowns throughout the match to win. And I got a late takedown, and that was pretty much whenever I kind of believed in myself that I was able to, you know, bang with those guys. So yeah. that was a pretty, pretty good moment for me. I would say one of my favorites, but it's a little different for everybody. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right. So changing topics, I was bringing their squad back. You oh, guys have this, fun. you guys have the squad squad back plus more how are we feeling i think i know we're going to win next year as a team and all all of our individuals as well because all those guys are just, like they're just getting older and you know what i mean i feel like <laughs> <laughs> you're getting younger yeah i don't know i just i don't i don't think they have any hmm. can you can you elaborate on that a little bit yeah i mean when when you see those guys <laughs> no hesitation just yep. yeah but- <laughs> When you, like when you see those guys walk around, you know what I mean. It's like they, if they try overly hard to like have like it's this tough guy look on them, you know what I mean. Which is like, I look at those dudes. I'm like, dude, like I'll slap every every single one of you guys. You know what I mean. Like, <laughs> even, the, even the coaches, you know what I mean. So like they try so hard to like, be this tough guy, and like I feel like with our team, it was it was very young this year, and I feel like next year they're gonna have more experience under their belt, which is going to lead to some more belief in themselves, and I feel like it's going to be a whole different, whole different, a whole different ball game. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I like the sound of that. Another year, for, yeah. Like, you know, the guys just get a little tougher. You know, figure a few things out. But yeah. that's another year for some of their younger guys too. Yeah. So either way, you. I'm yeah. Back. Yeah. So Chenzo FaceTimed me on the way home tonight, and he had a, a, an idea of doing word association with you. Mm-hmm. I've since thought of three words. So, Chenzo, because as I'm sitting here, I, I was thinking about three. So okay. if you want me to do my three first, or we can alternate, I'll do one. You can do one. All right. You go do you first. Have, do you have three in your head? I could think of three on the spot, okay. no doubt. I'll go first. Pizza. Go first. What do I do? You just, whatever first... first- First, first thing, thing that mind. comes to your mind. Terrible host. We didn't acknowledge the rules. <laughs> first thing that comes to mind. <laughs> yeah. Word association. Come on, bro. Yeah, my bad. All right, pizza. It's belly egg. <laughs> I like that. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. Fair. Yeah, yeah. All right, dodgeball. Dude, Word. that was my second one. <laughs> <laughs> his answer was his answer was win. <laughs> <laughs> was that your answer? Yeah. Wait. Hey. If you would have played with me yesterday, we probably would have won. Let's run it soon. All right, we'll do it. Carter has a cannon, almost as good as mine. Really? (laughs) I've heard Mark Hall. Mark, listen. When I'm there watching, Mark Hall is the number one target. Mark hasn't been in the room for a while. but Neither have I, apparently. (laughs) Mark Mark was a savvy player. You know, he didn't didn't have... We're very smart. Yeah, he didn't really have like a rocket arm, but he could catch. He he's very good in pos- certain positions and stuff like that. Kind of like yeah. his wrestling. It was sneaky too. Yeah, it was kind of like his wrestling. Well, yeah. we walked in. This was like a practice. I can't remember how long it was. Maybe like a year, a year and a half ago now. 
And as literally as you walk in the room, all I heard was Cal yell, get Mark Hall. <laughs> That's all you hear. And then it's just, it's a common theme. All right, next one, Iowa. Lose. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here's a good one. Mark Hall. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, man, that's our guy. <laughs> All right, here's here's my third one. RBY. Squirrel. <laughs> Squirrel. My that dude's super fast. Dude, he's a bouncy ball. Seriously. <laughs> he's like wrestling a bouncy ball. He's all he over like the place. Like, he's like a little it's bunny. It's so rabbit. funny when you wrestle after him and all the commentators like basically call you a big RBY. Like, look at he looks just <laughs> like him. His feet, he's doing the same feet thing. And it's always that you wrestle right after him. So it's yeah. like you see Roman do something and then you do it. And they always and make that. It's never like you wrestle than he does. And they call him a little Carter. Yeah. Yeah. They used to call Mark the big Chenzo. Then I back to back just like that. That's, that's funny. All right. My last one. Grilled chicken. Every day eats. <laughs> that's that's power right there. That is power right there. That is power. What yeah. is? How do you guys cook your grilled chicken? On the Traeger. So um, I smoke um, everything. Primarily. He smokes everything. No, I see your food on like on social media. It's the little things. He takes it to a whole nother level. <laughs> it's it's easy when I work from home, so I'm home all day long. So I can cook. I don't have to go out and I can experiment with things because number one, Traeger is a great brand partner. They've sent me all sorts of stuff, pellets, rubs, sauces, you name it. So it's not so bad to they go by the up. meat when you have a free Traeger, free, free pellets, free everything. It makes you want to experiment and food's easy to experiment yeah. with. But there is um, a Traeger barbecue sauce called um, apricot. Apricot Ooh. sauce by Traeger with chicken is the most amazing thing. You want to hear something crazy is that out of all the sauces they sent me, I'm not going to say I didn't like that sauce, but that was my yeah. least favorite. Which ones did you like more? I like the, uh, I like the, the spicy ones. The, uh, I'm a spicy guy too. The Texas spicy. I like that yeah. one a lot. Um, I forget what the other ones were, but I can't believe you didn't like apricot. Did you get Traeger no, I, too? Yeah, Traeger Q is good. Yeah. Um, no, apricot's good. It's just not my favorite. And to answer your question too, by the way, it's <laughs> chicken with bacon on top, cheese on a pretzel roll. That's the sandwich. Oh, that sounds good. That sounds super good, but yeah. It what's, is. Your favorite, what's your favorite dish? All around. Yeah, like yeah. It's a tomahawk steak. It was your last meal? Tomahawk steak. What are the sides? That's important. Uh, um, with a tomahawk steak, garlic mashed potatoes, garlic bread, and Brussels sprouts. I need to eat dinner. I haven't eaten in a while. You guys What's are yours? Hungry. I would go with the, um with a burger with bacon. Ooh. But like, it, but like, it has to be like a nice juicy one. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, not cooked all the way. It has to be like, it has to be like. You know what's kind of weird is that a lot of us, um, by us I mean just. NOWC or Penn State guys. This was this was two days say, ago. Would say a burger, and I don't know why. That looks money. Ooh. Wagyu look ground beef. That Snake looks River real Farms. Good. You were you always in the cooking? What's that? Were you always in the cooking? No, I was. Uh, I lived in a loft downtown, and there was a lot of restaurants right nearby. So I ate out all the time. I would go across the street to an Italian restaurant called Branca and constantly eat there. When my wife and I started dating and then when we got engaged and we spent so much time together and I moved back into the suburbs into a house, I started cooking a lot. At the same time, I knew how bad Bo wanted to. Um, he loves that. I know how bad Bo wanted to be involved with Traeger and Traeger is a sponsor of another client of mine, Jim Miller, UFC fighter. So oh, yeah. I got in touch with the with with uh, Traeger made the connect there, got Bo hooked up. And in the process, I got hooked up with Traeger. And when you get a Traeger, you're hooked. Like you just, it becomes your number one hobby. And I just got so into it. I just, I don't know. I'm obsessed with it now, but I was oh. never good. 
I'm actually <laughs> trying to I'm actually trying to find a video right now. Chenzo, in the meantime, tell him about our next mm -hmm. sponsor and I'm going to try to find this video for him. Wait, we our our next sponsor. Well, attack was the <laughs> Okay. So, the next one of the show. Okay. Okay. You guys know we're grooming ourselves with nothing but the best. And lately, that's the lawnmower 3.0 and the weed whacker. I actually have them right here. Hold on. Yeah, I had them upstairs. I was going to grab them. And my nice little my nice little Manscaped travel bag. You get one of these bad boys with that. Clutch for so, travel. Yeah, huge money. So we got we got the uh, lawnmower 3.0 and the weed whacker here. Oh, I'm knocking my mic all over the place. Both super awesome. Use them all the time. Clutch. I, actually just, I just used the weed clutch. whacker today. Um and so lawnmower 3.0 and we whackers manscape offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels and is now available in the usa canada the uk australia new zealand and the i, I think that's supposed to be europe um we have an exclusive offer for our audience use code chenzo c-e-n-z-o carter i know you're big into self-grooming code yeah. chenzo c-e-n-z-o to get 20 percent off and free shipping at manscaped.com join the movement and the other 2 million men who trust manscaped seriously i think these products are awesome um we wouldn't be or wouldn't wouldn't have any sponsors on this show that we didn't you know fully believe yeah. in and trust and you know use so this is awesome for me huge go to they have and a bunch of needs, they have a bunch of good stuff on everybody off, needs off, 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 off. all right so we're audio's fixed man What's going on here? So yeah, I fully trust in my Manscaped lawnmower 3.0. These things are money. True. There's money. something that everybody needs a personal groomer. You need to groom yourself, especially the weed whacker, like nose and ears real quick. Just take care of it after a shower. You like get all the edges and stuff? Yeah, yeah. So this is this is more for your body than your face. Well, I mean, the, this, lawn this, the lawnmower is for your body. Weed whacker does like here. Put up your nose, ears, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. No, they're they're good, dude. They're legit. I, I highly recommend. So, yeah. And so if you need to buy a groomer, if you need a nose and ear hair trimmer, uh, support the company that support the wrestling community. Obviously, Manscaped is supporting this podcast. So go support Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com. Promo code Chenzo. Not Senzo, but if you want to use Senzo, you can. It's spelled the same. It's spelled C the exact same. C E N Z O. You get free shipping and twenty percent off. Oh, hey, you want to hear something crazy? So, I'm uh I'm at those Olympic duels this weekend, and me and Eric Thompson are just walking past, and he does this thing where he calls me Vincenzo all the time because he knows it just irks <laughs> me. And we're walking past, and this dad or whoever goes. Hey, Vincenzo. And then Thompson goes, it's Vincenzo and corrects him, <laughs> tells him my name wrong. I was, I was at 11, dude. I, <laughs> I hate that. I hate that. It's, like, it's funny because my wrestling coach, Bill Giacato in middle school, I'm seventh grade. I'm not a good wrestler, but this is the guy that you want to be around. Like everybody looks up to him and he started calling me Bosh instead of Bash. And it, it picked up, and literally, I'd say for the rest of my life, 60% of the people say Bosch and 40% say Bash. A lot of people ask me about Bosch all the time, too. 100%. That's, <laughs> and I don't, I don't care. Like, that's what they say. It's all like Bosch, Bosch, Bosch. Only people that know me for, like, a long time start saying Bash because they hear it somewhere. Yeah. I can – I couldn't even tell you how many people can like actually say my last name correctly. You know what I mean? That's why every other time I hear somebody commentate it, it's Staraki it's one day and then Starachi the next day. Yeah. I'll hear all types of things. Like they'll add like an H in there somewhere. Like they'll, they'll like add their own name. Like, like... <laughs> all right. So my favorite, my favorite thing for my name that I've picked up on is if like, if I'm out to eat with a bunch of people or something like that, I will get my card back last every time because the waiter or waitress won't read off my name. They'll read off everyone else's first and give it to them and then just process of elimination. Give me mine. Why? Because they don't want to try it. Really? Yeah. More strategy. Yeah. Who are no, you I, going wait, who are you going out to eat with? Like aside from just Luke the, Gardner, because that's just the, the easiest name ever. Just the boys. <laughs> anyone here. Who Bo Nickel, you think that's a tough one? Okay, that's true. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I guess everybody yeah, has like stupid just, easy names. Anybody? I it's guess Carter. I just never looked at Vincenzo as a tough name to say or guess. 
It, it is. For most on, on spot. Yeah. I feel like. You know Dude, I mean? yo, if we combined our names, it would be pretty dope. In terms of structure, yeah. That'd be super. By the way. That'd be super dope. What are you cooking for us, Justin? Whenever you want. Hey, I'm, I'm down whenever. Yeah, I know. We can roll oh. up to Buffalo. Rochester, but we can go over to Buffalo. No, we can roll to Buffalo. <laughs> a yeah. buddy of mine actually just went to a local place and sent me a picture of their burgers. I'm so excited. I'm like, I don't want to get cocky, but like going back to petty competitiveness, I said, I will crush that burger. <laughs> like you, they cannot cook a better burger than me. So him and his wife came over and I asked him like 10 times, like, all right, who's the better burger? And it wasn't until he was telling some of our mutual friends where our mutual friends came up and said, yo, Mike said he had like the best burger of his life there. And that's, I'm just like, all right, that's, like that, let's go. that's my petty competitiveness. Yeah, I feel that, that's funny. Not the, not the marketing company for 12 years, although I get competitive about that, but cooking. That's something to throw hands over, just like FIFA. <laughs> Yeah, what is like the neighborhood dad? Like, is it the white Nike Monarchs that everybody says? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, the dad shoes. Yeah, <laughs> the dad shoes. If these come out, you know it's going to be good. Good grilling. Oh yeah, I should get a pair of those just whenever I go start grilling. Just I so my just so my food tastes better. Can we get <laughs> Nike to sponsor the podcast? That'd be great. Get a couple pairs. Get some ad reads. Man, we need to make that happen. All right, so Carter, so what what's next for you now? Um, just enjoy life a little bit. Um, it's trying to get better. I see my family and do some camps and then and to get better. And then I'll be at the senior goal team trials. What weight? 79? Yeah. I uh, see. I, I've been seeing you in the weight room a little bit. I thought you were thinking about going up to 84. Yeah, um, no. You stay up at 86 kilos. No, not in the cars. No, not, I mean, if I get taller, I will. You know I mean? Okay, yeah. Most people get taller in their 20s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you never know. No, I I think I think Nick Lee got taller. And he's he does yeah, look all know. that all that wood shot. <laughs> Aaron Yeah, it's, I think it's the, the the water carrying too. Yeah, Aaron is growing. We're all just getting taller. I think I'm getting taller too. <laughs> I think it's a bummer that nobody's going to the open next week. Though I totally get it. And I know some people are going, like, I think Mark Hall's going. Um, there's only across men's freestyle, Greco, and which I say men's, women, and like Greco. registrants. There's 60 across all three styles. But part of that was because USA Wrestling announced today that they're changing it to a one-day tournament. So that was part of why Titan Mercury oh. and the NYAC didn't register their guys yet because before they booked flights and hotels – Knowing that it was going to switch to a one-day tournament, they wanted to finalize that. Also, like the timing of it is just—I don't it think very good. Like yeah, we need to mean, push that back a month. Like there needs to be another month in between those for sure. There, there should definitely be another couple of weeks. It's interesting too because so much is on the line. Junior nationals is actually like the junior world team trials. The juniors who win the U.S. Open are on the junior world team. And the seniors who win at the non-Olympic weights are on the Pan Am team. So there's a lot in the line for a tournament that's so quick right after everything's just happened. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just been weird with USA Wrestling how, like, they kind of just announce stuff, like, abruptly. They're just like, like, hey, like. Bam, I know. They, they get mad at me sometimes because I'll find something out. And I don't, unless it's public somewhere, like I hear this stuff, like I knew it was going to a one-day tournament for three days. I'm not going to put it out before them, but I'll tell them sometimes, like, guys, you got to announce when this is going to be. Like, I get it might be more difficult right now because of COVID, but you're talking about like, the last chance. Like, nobody knows when it is. It's in three weeks. Hey, hey, like, like your sweatshirt says, just keep it rolling, dude. Right. Content, content, content. Just keep it rolling. Carter, how into or not into are you with social media? I'm not into social media at all, really, but I definitely need to start up in my game with it, though. You know what I mean? You you are posting a little bit more now. I mean, yeah, a little bit more. I mean, like, I'm just like, I'm just like not into it, really. You know what I mean? Because like, I'd rather I'd rather enjoy the moment. You know what I mean? Instead of being on my phone all day long. Because like, I see Roman like. When like when we're hanging out, I'm like bro, like there's no way like like 
you're having fun. Like you're just like, on <laughs> all the time, you know what I mean? It's like, I don't like that stuff, but like, I'm going to learn how to use it all more. Yeah. So I can, I can it's a tool. Better. You definitely yeah. have to learn to use it. You know, I, I've had a number of talks with people that have a similar perspective towards it. And my summarized thoughts are, you can definitely learn to balance creating content and consuming it. I think right now Roman's doing a little bit of each where he's creating it, but he's also consuming it a good amount. And I think it's because he enjoys it and he likes engaging, but definitely anybody who, you know, like yourself, maybe wants to be more in the moment. I think you can still like, you're in a place where you could schedule a post out for the next two weeks and you get crazy good engagement because people want to hear from you. You know, there's yeah. a lot of ways to leverage social media and not, I think where a lot of people get hung up is, is consuming it. When you start consuming more than you want, or it starts becoming a distraction, it's usually from what you're consuming, not what you're putting out. Definitely if there's an element of privacy, like I want to live my life, and I don't really want people to know X, Y, and Z. But from what I've seen, the less you consume it, I think the more freer you'll be to, to put stuff out because you're not just sitting there watching it. Like some yeah. people love that. I think many need to just, like if you look at Snyder, he, he doesn't even tweet some of his own stuff. Like he's working with brands that put it out for him and he doesn't even, I don't think he looks at it too much at all, but I definitely think it's, it's one of the things that I admire athletes for right now is learning to balance that both how much can you leverage it and not getting distracted by it? Because I know when I get a negative tweet or something, I read it and I try to like put myself back into a perspective of like, this doesn't matter at all. But he feeds into the haters, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He says, we, he says we tweet sometimes. He's like, look what this guy said to us. And I'm like, like yeah, who cares? Like, but I need that. I need to hear that because I'm not like, I've never had him the level of importance publicly it's like, it's where like, someone cares at all to be negative this guy's name is like tim 100 and it's like <laughs> abby's just like a blank thing and he's like it's like like following 17 followers zero <laughs> look what this guy said about our show and i'm like dude he didn't even listen to it <laughs> yeah 100 he's just trolling yeah I, I think social media is funny though like with like i kind of like the um all the drama you know what i mean I think it's funny. I don't see a lot of it though, because I'm not on my phone that often. But yeah. when I do see it and I come across it, like I think it's funny. You know what I mean? Like it was. I read one of the comments on on my post after I lost the Big Ten finals. You know, someone commented. He, he was like, um, "How does it feel losing to your own shadow?" And like I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, that is kind of funny. Yeah, <laughs> kind of funny. yeah. I I um. I liked your one comment, so I posted a picture of us in St. Louis like years ago, and then you commented and you said my turn next, or like I'm next, or something like that. Yeah. No, you said you said my turn, and then yeah, you won, and then I then I commented your turn on your picture. Yeah, I thought that was, that was, that was, <laughs> I thought that was cool, bro. I see cool. that picture like that actually fired me up too because like I think we were um we were actually in the arena and we were touring the place, mm -hmm. and then I seen that picture and I was like, yo, like it's it's, it's one my turn. It's go time. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good time. Yeah, that's where it can be fun to consume it. Like when yeah. when you're surrounded by people that inspire you, it's fun to see what they're doing that you might not get to hear or you might just not might not get brought up in conversation, but when someone shares it and you can see it, I think it's pretty yeah. fun. I'm definitely a fan of social media though. Like I definitely think it's important and it's good, you know what I mean? Because like you get to watch like a lot, a lot of cool things. So I'm a fan of it. I just don't use it that often. If uh, and if you're on social media, go check out my most recent post with uh, the boy Carter himself. Yeah, yeah. I have to go check I, that out. Me, you, I, and Mark. Yeah, I share out pretty much your post instantly on Bash Mania, and I mm -hmm. wanted to say like a preview of tonight's episode, but on the off chance, like anytime I do that, I feel like an episode falls through. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm not jinxing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that's happened a couple times. So. Yeah, I don't even. Everybody always wants to know like who's next, who's coming on, and I'm like, hey, you'll find out when the next yeah. show comes out. Yeah. Should we tell them who our next? No, our next guest is the quintessential. Won't happen as soon as we say it. Yeah, because <laughs> that's how he. That's how he be. That's that's how he is. But I'm excited for that. Yeah. All right, guys. Any any final comments? Boy, but... Final thoughts? 
favorite desserts. This, this is important. Lava molten cake. Oh, that sounds good. I'm not going to lie. Well, that great. after is tomahawk steak. That's right. the meal. <laughs> that sounds like I'm going to sleep for 12 hours. After <laughs> that. Yeah. yeah. I'm going right to bed after that one. I'm not. I'm not a big dessert guy, to be fair. Really? Yeah, no. Like, I don't... I'm I don't not know, either. Ice, not a big ice cream guy. You're not, not either? No, I have a molten cake probably like two or three times a year, and that's it for the year for desserts. So, so like, you you stick to the molten cake, though. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's, that's the only dessert. If, <laughs> if I get somewhere and it's on a menu, I get it, and then I'm good for, like, three months. Like, the couple who came over a week or two ago and had the burgers... The wife made brownies was an amazing brownie. I'm good mm-hmm. for two, three months. <laughs> yeah, I don't see like I don't eat that stuff ever, or, like cookies, brownies, things like that. Yeah, like, nuts. I'm like I'm the exact opposite. Like I'd rather eat it's dessert over like actual food. Like see, I'd rather eat like you said pizza, bellyache. I'd rather eat pizza than like 100. percent I'm a two time a week pizza guy. Oh really? Oh yeah, we've got Twice a lot a of good pizza up here. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, we don't have we don't have any here, so. No, nothing can stay college to eat, honestly. <laughs> I, can go get, I go get roots and chipotle. So what's your go-to dessert then? Literally anything that has sugar, honestly. <laughs> Dude, so like I, I like candy though. Like I'll eat like get gummies and stuff like that. Yeah. You ever right. have um, it's peanut butter blossoms? Nah. No, but I'm in for peanut butter. I'm, I'm, butter I'm all in for peanut combo. butter. Yeah. yeah. You guys got to check those out. Like that's. That's a game changer for sure. I'm gonna write it down because I, I like perfect bars. That's a good dessert. Yeah, those are fire. Reese's is the king. Reese's like the Reese's. Reese's well, we talked about Reese's fast. You could use a Reese's the best candy bar. The peanut butter blossom though. So like, all right, I'm gonna money. get one. Let's look it's into a, it. My wife does not need an excuse to go get me a dessert. <laughs> <laughs> she will get three just to find that one. <laughs> But All right. so Carter, um, we talked about, you know, short term plans moving forward, but what about, you know, what are some long term plans, you know, um, just wrestling throughout college, maybe thoughts after college, anything like that. I yeah. know you've got, you got some time left for sure. You know, you yeah. don't want to think too far ahead, but. Not for sure. I mean, I definitely want to win NCAs every single time, Worlds and Olympics. And then after I do all that, I'll probably go fight. Just go then, punch some people in the face. Yeah. After I win, after I win that belt, then I'll just I'll just live life, and then I don't know. I love but, Willie's reaction, Chenzo, to you saying you want to fight. He's like, "You fight?" Yeah, I was like, "Oh, I'll dabble. We'll see. We'll see." <laughs> he was Wait. so excited. <laughs> and lucky for you, we'd probably fight at different weight classes. Because I would just run away the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I would just back. I would just back up. Yeah. <laughs> I actually like fighting. It's actually like, it's fun because mm-hmm. you can, because like in wrestling, it's more of a grind where I have to grab you and I have to move you. Where in, in fighting, I can like, I can move at a certain angle to like have you move at a certain angle too. You know what I mean? So it's like less, it's like less, um, less, less, getting, your, less getting your neck and back pulled on. Yeah. Less, like a for lot sure. A lot less of that. It feels great. It feels great on the knees. It does. <laughs> I feel like it's easy to do, honestly, though. I you mean, it could be. I don't know. I haven't done it. Learn all the technique and stuff like that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, if we get there, yeah. and then maybe if it is easier, I don't. I can't make a statement on that yet. I don't really know. <laughs> I mean, you see guys like it's Kamar Russo one of the bell, and like he wasn't that good of a wrestler. He was a solid wrestler, but he's a monster in the cage, dude. He's a beast. No, he is. He is. He's yeah, but you look like what wrestlers are doing in MMA right now is just wild. Oh, we have Kamaru and uh, Masvidal this weekend. Oh, is that this weekend? Yeah. Wow. That was quick. quick. Yeah. We got Kamaru. Kamaru you- and Masvidal. What's up? Who do you got? I got to watch uh, I gotta watch some of the shows, like the pre-shows to lead up first, and then, and yeah. then I'll make my – then I'll make a – I'll probably make a prediction later in the week on, on the podcast. But the UFC Embedded are you talking about watching? Yeah, I got to watch some Embedded, some interviews, stuff like that. Then, uh, then I'll probably pick the wrong person after that. I feel like wrestling should do a lot of stuff like that too to like help grow our sport. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, man. Like, there's so many opportunities for us to like help grow our sport. That's just like, that's just content. Really nice. If we were, if we recorded ourselves at the trials, you know, yeah, honestly, um, just our practices, like weight cut stuff like that, going like how there's 30 of us at LA Fitness in the sauna. 
you know, with just a <laughs> yeah. bunch of people looking at us like, who are these guys? Like, yeah, the sport like, it's kind wants of funny. it so bad. Like, TR Foley, like, told me, if you can get one of your guys you're connected with to let us follow them leading up to the week of a big tournament, we're all in. Like, they're in. We're getting to the point to where creating content and building those storylines, like, that's why I started this podcast to try to get more stories out there from the sport. Like the more stories that you hear and the more you can connect, like that's why some of the fights are so great. Cause you'll watch embedded and you'll get to know the fighters mm-hmm. leading into that week. And you're yeah. that much more invested now you're following more of them. Like, yeah. They have guys, they have guys like Dominic Cruz showing technique on like ESPN plus and stuff like that for fighting. Like that's, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, awesome. Like we don't, we don't like, that would be like if we, you know, had a big, just say the, the David JB match um, coming up and they did behind the technique, you know, with Dave, like behind, 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 behind JB's double. And they have a yeah. top tier wrestler, you know, breaking down technique of what Jordan's going to be looking for in the match. That's cool stuff. Yeah. I mean, we don't, we don't have that. It helps people who like don't know wrestling, like understand what's going on. Yes. You know and I mean? that's, and that's what we need because people who know wrestling and are wrestlers will always be into wrestling. The people yeah. that, you know, that we're trying to grow to have no idea what it is. I'm not going to lie. I can't watch wrestling. Like I don't find it fun to watch at all. I do sometimes like I watch, I like watching, you know, my teammates, people oh, yeah. know that I'm invested in, you know, people that are exciting to watch, but what were you talking about? Uh, it's a while ago, like big 12. So it was like a third period ride out. Like that's, that's exciting for some people, but not the general public. Well, yeah, and that's I was... why I got like kind of started the debate on Twitter once again about folk style of freestyle. Because, like I tuned into a random duel. And if you don't know the storylines, it's just, it's not, if you don't know the storylines and you're tuning in and you're watching a guy on top and he's just kind of riding casually and the guy on bottom isn't doing much, is waiting for the period to end. It's not exciting. Just all of Carter's matches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so fun for those guys on the bottom though. Oh no, hey, listen, I can appreciate that grind ride, dude. That's hard. Yeah, to do. and it and the thing <laughs> is is like there there's there's aspects to wrestling. Wrestling is a very selfish sport. To be successful, you have to be very selfish. But to be entertaining, you often have to be selfless. So it's a tough thing for wrestling and wrestlers when you're taught to be selfish and do everything it takes to win and to be entertained fans want you to be as selfless as possible it's yeah. a tough balance you could do both and just headlock everybody yeah you can do both and just headlock everybody that would be that would be pretty exciting i don't know i'd like that to see pretty- yeah i feel like folk style wrestling though helps you like have a more have more self-defense you know what i mean than than actual freestyle wrestling so i feel like i like folk style for that but I feel like freestyle is more fun and there's a lot more action going on. Yeah, more free flowing. Yeah. I think folk style does more to somebody. Like if you are going to wrestle and you're going to learn, folk style is the best. Watching, I think freestyle is the best. Yeah. I agree with with all that. I'd rather watch freestyle unless it's a really good folk style match. And you can end a match quick in freestyle too and not – and not to grind a lot of wins out, you know what I mean? Where yeah. guys are stalling and all that it's stuff. A, yeah, it's hard to text somebody in 20, 30 seconds. In folk, folk style. St- in folk style. Yeah. Right. I, don't think I, I don't think I've seen it done. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, final words. Uh, I had my final words like 20 minutes ago. So That's true. Carter, you, got, you had your final words with our dessert recommendations. I now want a molten cake. Any other <laughs> final words? Um, all glory to God. Awesome. Guys, go follow Carter. Encourage him to post more of his content. Go Carter, follow what's your, what's your Instagram handle? Do you know off the top of your head? At Carter Storacci, just my name. So pretty simple. Yeah, pretty simple. If you All can right. spell it. But we'll link it up <laughs> below. We'll spell it out in the description so you don't have to think. Easy. We'll think for Easy. you. And follow Chenzo. And if you want, if you want to. Only for the first person, I've heard they might do a camp or a clinic together if you DM them ASAP. The Chenzo Carter Clinic. That'd be fun. We could do that. Also, yeah. Chenzo and I talked about something that if you live in the Rochester area in June, there might be something really, really fun coming. Mm-hmm. Don't want to give too much away, but there's something fun coming. That. 
We might be we might be cooking something up. We might be Carter, cooking you can something come if you up. Want to. Yes. Right. You can come if you want. Wagyu burgers invited. will be on Ooh. the grill. I'm there. Yeah. Final thoughts are uh, burgers on the grill. That's it. <laughs> With a molten king. All right, later. And the beat goes on.